to subscribe. It's kind of like voting for me for president. <laughs> Hi, kid. I'm confused. How can I help? I played a therapist once. All right, Olivia the Ostrich. I'm a storyteller. Confirmed! So why have I never heard of the storyteller's rule? Because it's a new book. Oh, wait, that's not how I meant the question. Still confused. Maybe, and hear me out. Okay, Green Bear. Maybe you're reading it wrong. How so? Instead of the storyteller's rule, maybe it's like the storyteller's rule. Oh, like the storytellers, we rule like we rock. Exactly. Ooh, I like that. Or maybe you're not a real storyteller if you don't know the rule. I reject your theory, which I said, ooh, you can't handle the truth. I also reject that statement. Let's just go in before anybody else offers any other theories. All right, oh, okay, well, so far so good. Make your own magic like that. Oh, what does it say here? We are the storytellers. Oh, okay. We've noticed you've been in a bit of a slump. I have? We are here to help you make something. You are? Something great, okay. But before we do that, there are just a few rules every storyteller must learn. Rules. I mean, if you were a real storyteller, you'd already know them. Well, you know what? Maybe I already know them and just forgot that I know them because I know so many things that they accidentally fall out one side, but then they come back in the other side. It, it'll be fine. I'm sure I know this already. Uh, the storyteller's rule. So I guess, uh, oh, let's see, we have a desk here. And uh, I guess this is a good place for a storyteller to write a story or tell a story. Desks always work really well. And we have a whole bunch of supplies and a sleeping dog. I'm gonna let him lie. One morning, the storytellers assembled. Oh, we're having a meeting, okay. All right, gather round. I've called this emergency meeting because we have a crisis of imagination on our hands. Oh no, this is a crisis meeting. As you know, it was a big year. A new school, a new and very loud baby brother, homework. Oh, okay. I don't think they're talking about me because I have a baby brother, but he's not new. <gasps> oh, that must be, that must be the storyteller we're talking about. The closer we get to the end of the school year, the more Birdie is struggling to be creative. <gasps> Birdie is her name. She used to love writing and making up fun characters, but she can't seem to get past the blank page anymore. Oh, the blank page. There is nothing like it to either inspire you or <gasps> make you forget everything you've ever known. It's very dramatic that way. And we have the big end of year writing assignment to worry about. Everybody's so worried and let's see, it's due, oh. Oh, it's due soon. Okay, okay, we're on a deadline, people. I don't think I can take much more sharpening and nervous chewing. Homework is wrecking me. I'll completely disappear if we don't do something. Oh, look at this poor guy. He's all chewed up and get the pencil out of your mouth, Birdie. It's not a carrot. Or a chocolate bar. Or a celery stick. Or a chocolate bar. Pip was right. That's pencil Pip. They had to do something. Otherwise, Pip's a goner. Dun, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. Storytelling rules. The ones that I'm sure I already knew. Okay, pay attention. Done is better than perfect. Only you can write your story. Ahem. I know this is an emergency and we are pressed for time, but can we please abide by the rules and recite the guidelines of the storytellers as is tradition? Okay, I will abide by the storyteller traditions and say the rules, which I totally know. Number one, pay attention. Oh. That, that was quick, okay, that's good. Birdie just needs to remember how to marvel at the world around her. That's how a story is born. Oh, 
I know. What about the time the dog farted so loud he scared himself? <laughs> that sounds like a great story. <laughs> Although we can all agree that that was disgustingly marvelous. I'm not sure that's what we're looking for here. Yeah, that, that may not be exactly what the story needs to be. How about when she found the perfect rock in the park? Oh, there she was on an adventure, and, and, oh, yeah, that turned out to be pretty marvelous. Oh, oh, she, like, she drew an image of the rock, and then she decorated it with a googly eye and some yarn to give the rock, uh, obviously, a fabulous hairstyle. Googly eye? Why, well, yeah, still there's a googly eye in the book. Oh, it's so nice and round and googly. Can I have it? But, Dill, you have two eyes on right now. Oh, I do? Yeah, you only need two. Oh, okay. Yup, 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 yup. Oh, but still, if if I should need this googly eye, you can always come right back to the book and just pluck it out. Okay, that makes it feel good. Yup, 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 yup. That's more like it. Moving along, rule number two. Okay, so we saw that she got creative uh, because she was out there exploring ideas, paying attention. So paying attention got her the rock friend, and then she got crafty, and then there was a, an idea born here. So now we're moving along to rule number two, which I totally know, which is done is better than perfect. All right, Ms. Ruler. We need to find a way to encourage Birdie to put something on the page. Yes, because if you're so worried about being perfect, ah, you may never write anything. Indeed, the pursuit of perfection can paralyze you. Oh, that sounds terrible. I like it. Oh, but she's lost her creative spark. How can she put words on a page if she doesn't feel inspired? We can help her. And why is the dino pen holding a googly eye and a sticker? But don't forget the third rule. What is the third rule, Ms. Ruler? And actually, she has a name. The very front of the book told her, told us that it was Ruth, and Dino Pen is Penny, and Red is Red, and uh, Pencil Pip, and the eraser is Peanut, and the other pen with the eyeglasses is Vic, which I will probably forget as soon as we get off of this page. Cool, cool. So now we have to look at rule number three. We've already established that number one is paying attention, right? Like she did right there, here, so you could see the words, uh, paying attention. And then done is better than perfect. Just put something on the page and see where it goes. But what's the third rule that I did not forget? Only you can write your story, which is so true of this kind of a story and also of the story of your life. We can't do the work for her, but we can point her in the right direction. Ah, an amazing ideas jar, which I love, but it's empty. So they're gonna have to help her fill it up. And always remember our sacred oath. Our sacred oath? Don't get caught. Oh, I won't. They talked some more and came up with a plan. And the plan seems to involve uh, supplies, like some sort of a marker and some sort of a letter and those googly eyes again, and uh, a squiggly line. And uh, there seems to be some sort of a closet or a uh, refrigerator. And then there's a, seems to be a breakfast situation involved. And then there's toilet paper. And then there's a desk. And I don't understand how any of this leads to a story, but we'll see. So they talked some more, came up with a plan. And that night, after Birdie fell asleep, the storytellers got to work. Okay, now, Birdie fell asleep like that on the desk, drooling all over everything. And also, like, she's going to have a crick in her neck in the morning. But off they go. They're... Looks like you know, this pencil is climbing up the ruler to get out, and and I don't know why the red 
marker is stacking the play dos and blue pencil guy is helping. I think his name is bleh, but you know, I told you I was gonna forget. And then there's Dino, Dino Pen with the You Can Do It sticker and off they go and a bunch of googly eyes, my goodness. That's like a dill wonderland of eyeballs in there. And oh, what is this? They're rappelling down the desk onto the ground, like Mission Impossible style. They cleverly arranged this. Apparently, something with googly eyes and her toothbrushing station. And that, hmm, this looks like they're putting alphabet magnets on the refrigerator. And then they hop back in their cups, gluck, 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 before the sun came up. And she has slept there all night long. I don't know how Bertie can do that. My neck would be killing me. Bertie woke with a jolt. Boop. Yep, that's definitely the face of a jolt. And you have a little something there, Bertie, a little Little paper clip action there. And oh, uh, need more googly eyes. Seriously, girl, you really don't. I saw the box you have. She had fallen asleep at her desk without writing a thing. Again. Oh. I think that Bertie, our storyteller, competition for you, has writer's block. And there's room for more than one storyteller on the planet, which Jefferson. No, really? Are you sure about that? Well, yeah, I, actually, I, I am. At first, they weren't sure if Bertie would even notice their clues, okay? Look at that, she's at her toothbrushing station with the googly eyes. Her toilet seat has the googly eyes. There are stickers everywhere with little inspirational messages, but she seems like she's still half asleep. But then, a spark. It started when she noticed that her cornflakes had been converted into Captain Cornflakes. Da -da 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 -da. And there's a captain looking out across the kitchen where there's a mysterious ocean that we can't even see. And he's looking for something. And then over here, it's not just milk. Oh no, it is Ms. Milk. And there she is, Ms. Milk year 2023 and 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 she's got hearts and there's flowers oh is something stirring in here and then oh and then look the alphabet letters the 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 magnets that they had been putting on the refrigerator left a special message for birdie to inspire her play wonder geeks that's how you pronounce that word and then a light bulb the universal sign of I have an idea and I think we finally have our inspiration going. The next thing they knew, the storytellers were on a walk. They're all with her, all her supplies. And they were making lists, feverishly jotting things down. Ideas are popping and crackling now. So what are some of the things she's noting? How did the ladybug get its spots? Great question. Who lives here? Good question. Cool things to remember. Toad in a hole, fairy rings. Drawings of bugs seen today. More drawings. A complex graph of something. And more notes, and she's looking at the ladybug, and she's looking through that. Ooh. And one idea just led to another, and suddenly the world all around her came to life in a fresh way because she is paying attention, and she is taking notes. Bertie had an, an idea jar full of ideas. Ding, 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 ding. It's full. And, and a notebook full of lists, fairy rings, and who lives in the hole in the tree, which sounds like a great premise for a book. And a toad in a hole, and cloud shaped like a dinosaur. And is that thing a possum or a cat? And then a tin full of words. Oh, oh. Oh, boing, great word. Zigzag, another great word. Willy nilly, which is like, wah, another excellent word. And ladybird and Heidi hole and pollywog. And, oh, such a good word right there. Shenanigans, which means shenanigans. And her head was full of characters like that ice cream cone and that worm and that mushroom and that thing that's maybe a turnip or an onion or some kind of vegetable that I really can't identify. But, uh-oh, her body language 
says it all. No stories. Despite all her heart maps and quick writes and sketching, Birdie had only ended up with bits and pieces of stories. The creative process, kid, can totally be like that. Sometimes it just comes in a gush, the inspiration, and you write it all down like that. That is what happens with me. Suddenly a whole thing will come out almost like complete, you know, ready to go, a whole song, a whole poem, a whole story, just ready. But sometimes you get a piece and then you get a piece over here. And then you have to work a little bit harder to fill it out and make it make sense. Inspiration, it just does what it does. And then you have to do your thing to make it a story. She started to feel defeated yet again by her nemesis, her enemy, the blank page. Quick, do something. I can't. She'll see me. She's going to give up. All the ideas will fall right out of her head. You must do something. Oh, no. All their post-it notes with the what-ifs and the inspiration and the idea jar and the googly eyes and the words. None of it's coming together. And quick, quick, Pip is going to be chewed away to nothing if we don't do something. Desperate, Pip broke the storyteller's oath. Oh, we can do that? And leaped from her cup, woo, onto the desk. Gloop. Oh, with a post-it note, the what if. The pencil caught Bertie's eye, actually, both eyes. And she wondered. Did she wonder how that pencil went flying across the room? I mean, that would be the thing that I would be wondering. The more she wondered, the more her imagination grew. Oh, look at that, she's holding Pip, thinking maybe Pip has sparked that idea that was missing from over her head. She started to connect the dots, 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 and things that she liked. As Bertie held tight to her inner voice, the words flowed out from her mind, through her hand, and onto the paper. Look at all the images, everything that's inspiring her. Wait, wait, I have to turn the book upside down so I can read what she's writing so far. Uh, let's see here. Once upon a time, good start, there was a kid with a big imagination and a magic purple pencil. <gasps> Pip might be the star of the story. Finally, Birdie had her story. And now, anytime Birdie has trouble with a blank page, which remember earlier I said could either be a source of great inspiration or great desperation, she keeps a note to remember the most important rule of storytelling. Always begin with wonder. And it looks like Pip is in the story, and, and there's Vic, who I, I, I did not call Vic at all, and there's uh, Penny, the dino pencil, and they're there, and there's Red, the marker, and apparently she's out there too, and, and suddenly the eraser is a cat and that meows, and there's Ruth, our ruler, uh, who I just called ruler lady, and it looks like we have a story. No! No! Wait! Wait! Okay, okay, I'm not, I'm not done. What, what, what's up? <laughs> what's the story that she wrote? Well, they didn't really... Let us see a lot of it, did they? No! I need you to finish it! Okay, but, um, it, Green Bear, I only have these pictures to go by. Okay, that should do it. Okay, uh, I, I can do this. Of course you can do it. You're my storyteller, okay? Okay, all right. Pressure's on. All right, gonna make up a story with this. Think I can do it? I think I can. Let's see. Okay, so once upon a time, because that's the best way to start any story. There was a pink unicorn named Pinky. Okay, a pink unicorn named Pinky, makes sense, who lived on Jupiter all by herself, surrounded by nothing but clouds and stars and the occasional floating feather or leaf from Earth. And Pinky was kind of lonely. And this rocket went by one day 
and said, hi, Pinky, how are you? And Pinky said, I'm lonely. So then the rocket did its rockety business, and then it came back down to Earth. Yeah, and now what happened? Okay, okay, so then what happened was that when it came back down to Earth, he, the rocket saw his friend Pearl, hi, and Rocket asked Pearl, how you doing, Pearl? And Pearl said, I'm good, except that I have my hands full with this giant dragon balloon. And because I have this giant dragon balloon that I have to hold all the time, I don't have uh, any free hands to be able to, to write a letter to my pen pal, Wilbur. And I'm sad about that. She can't write to Wilbur? No, because she doesn't have a free hand to hold the pencil to write the letter to send to Wilbur. So then, so then what happened? Okay, so then what happened was that the rocket thought of something. You know, Pearl, I know a lovely unicorn named Pinky who is lonely and she could use a friend like a dinosaur balloon. And then your hand would be free to write your letter with your pencil to your friend Wilbur the worm in the jar. Why, that sounds like a wonderful idea, but how can I get the, my, my balloon friend up there? Oh, that's easy. Uh, I, I'll, I'll take him up there for you. Oh, you would do that for me? Of course I would. Oh, this is really good. And then what happens? Well, obviously, the rocket ship took the dinosaur dragon-looking balloon. Oh, 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 so the balloon is like a half dragon, half dinosaur like me? Yes, exactly, Doug. So the rocket ship takes the half dragon, half dinosaur, or balloon up to the unicorn and the unicorn was no longer lonely and was so grateful, yay, yay, that she gave the rocket this kite as a token of her appreciation because that's what you do sometimes. And don't worry that the dragon dino balloon couldn't talk because using her unicorn magic, she sprinkled her magic over her dragon dino balloon and he started talking and then they lived happily ever after on Jupiter and Pearl was able to resume her pen pal friendship with the worm in the jar and everybody was happy. Whoa, I can't believe you just did that. I know. I can't believe it either. If you think I'm gonna praise you, I'm not. No, I didn't expect anything from you. But kid, now that you know the rules, which I already totally knew, there's one more rule that you have to know. Oh, there's more? There's always more. The best rule of all is that there are no rules to what or how or when you can write. Just let your mind go bloop, wherever it wants. And that's my favorite storyteller rule of all. Yeah!